organization um, did start a voters campaign, mm -hmm. voter registration. Um, I think the goal then was to register 5,000. But um, I learned a lot and I think what was very important to me, when I was in Pittsburgh, we were in predominantly white neighborhoods. I went to predominantly white schools. And I hadn't before been involved in any movement that had involved African Americans working together. And uh, that solidarity was very important to me. And the people with whom I was most active, I've remained friends with throughout my life. Mm -hmm. Very good. Tell us some of your accomplishments post the Atlanta Student Movement. Well, First of all, it was, it was difficult for me because I wanted to, to be a diplomat. And of course, most of my students, the students who were in school with me, went on to law school to be civil rights lawyers. Um, Lonnie started in that direction. Ben Brown, who was very active, was a Clark College student, mm -hmm. initially married to Lydia, mm -hmm. who uh, was on the Atlanta Student Commission, Lydia Arnold and was a Clark College graduate as well. Um, and Marion Wright Edelman, mm -hmm. who was a classmate of mine, but she had gone to Europe the year before, she went on to do civil rights law. I wanted to go to the School of International Relations and get a, a, a master's in international relations. Mm -hmm. So that was very different. My compromise was to do African studies. I thought by doing that I could still be concerned about peoples of African descent. It's important to point out too that another reason that participation in the civil rights movement was so important to me was that I was in Paris during the year before most of Francophone Africa, which was the area I had concentrated on, um, gained their independence. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, now wait a minute. Here are Africans gaining independence. They can rule their own countries. And of course, at that time, I said it, but we will never even have a president <laughs> of the United States that's African American in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. So that was another reason I was very interested in the liberation struggle of the African countries, since their colonization mm -hmm. had been largely by uh, the United Kingdom mm -hmm. and of course France and Germany and Belgium, European countries, peoples of European descent mm -hmm. that were responsible for the discrimination against us. Is there anything you'd like to add? Well, that I think it's been impressive the extent to which those of us who have been involved in the movement have remained in contact. Mm -hmm. I'm struck though, having returned to Atlanta, to see how little I knew about the city of Atlanta. We were so circumscribed mm -hmm. at Spelman and what we can do, what we could have done and, um, and seen. I remember when I went to the Fox Theater the first time, it was raining. I had to walk upstairs on the outside because we could only sit in the balcony. Uh, I never did that again while I was uh, here as a student. And the discrimination on the buses, I just hadn't been exposed to that in Atlanta. So those things have made a difference. I think now as I return, when I returned to Atlanta, I see separation, if not segregation. You know, while it's true that whites and African Americans have interactions on the job, you don't have as much um, social interaction here as you, you do in the North. And one of the things that I feel so vividly on a daily basis now, I think, is the resurgence of overt um, racism. I think that's largely because of the economic situation where people feel threatened and so they reach out to find a victim 
who's responsible. And of course, having an African-American president of the United States makes him an easy target. So that is troublesome to me. That is troublesome. Uh, we have tried, we, those who had participated in the student movement, to try to work with the younger generation to get them more excited about advocating for their rights mm -hmm. and standing up. And that's been a more challenging task. Um, it's of interest to me that it comes at a time when life is much more difficult for African Americans. The elimination, practically, of that tier of jobs that so many African Americans who hadn't gone on to uh, college or even graduate school had, those jobs have evaporated. And so you find much more uh, joblessness. Mm -hmm. um, I'm shocked about some of the behavior of students in the public school system that I hear about. So many of my classmates worked in the public school system here in Atlanta. <clears throat> and um, I, I think that something dramatic has to happen, and I don't see that it's going to happen anytime soon, but that clearly um, racism is much more overt now than it was immediately after the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think it's important to emphasize for people is that there were periods in the movement. Litigation, of course, was first with uh, Brown versus Board of Education. Um, then you had the direct action of the student movement uh, initially at uh, North Carolina State. And of course, all the activities of the SNCC workers in the mm -hmm. South, and that was vital. Uh, the Deep South, mm -hmm. what we used to call the Show Up South. <laughs> And um, interestingly enough, you know, three of those states that were so behind then um, are behind now. That is Alabama, Mississippi, uh, South Carolina, and Louisiana, kind of, in the same boat. But it's, it's obviously a long struggle. And um, I remember a black minister say, well, well, we are, we ain't, what is it? We ain't where we want to be, we ain't where we're going to be, but thank God we ain't where we were. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot to do, and I really hope that um, young people and others in the African American community will begin to do more to work together to advocate for full justice and equality in our country. It's absolutely essential. Very good. Okay. All right.